In my two recent videos on non-intrusive, not catching attention photography combos for travel and street, where I looked into the Hasselblad X1D Mark II here with the XCD 45P lens from Hasselblad and also looked into the Leica SL2 with the 45 millimeter Sigma lens, a lot of people came back and said, can you not compare these two sensors? And that's what I want to do in this video now. And in order to make these combos comparable, I actually went here for the Sigma 35 millimeter widest open aperture F2 DGDN, which stands compatible with full frame format for sensors. And we'll use that lens on the Leica SL2 and compare a few shots with the X1D Mark II with the XCD 45P. And I will do this in different ways. I will make these exposures kind of comparable, not exactly the same, but we'll look into high ISO images and low ISO images and we'll overexpose and underexpose and get kind of in this way some impression from the dynamic range of the sensors of these two. And my natural expectation would be that a medium format sensor, and by the way, this is a cropped medium format sensor, so it's not the full medium format sensor like you would find it in the Hasselblad or in a phase one camera in the most professional lineups, but it is a substantially larger sensor than what you find in the Leica SL2, which is a classical full frame sensor. From resolution, these sensors are comparable. Here we have 50 megapixels, here we have 47 megapixels. That doesn't make a big difference. And the natural assumption would be that the larger sensor is bringing the better results. And that's what we will look into. And I think now it's time to start the video. Here's my shooting location. I was happy to escape Zurich city and drive outside to the countryside overlooking Lake Zurich. It's one of my most favorite spots. And here I took the images. I mounted both cameras the same way on the same tripod. And now let's go and have a look at the images. I took lots of images at this evening, looking really into all different kinds of settings, parameters, and I'm going to share them all in the course of the video. But before we do that, we need to become conscious that comparing a medium format with a full frame sensor is not as straightforward as people might think. I will try to provide in two minutes a mini excursion why this is not so straightforward, but there will be a more detailed video in the next weeks where I will explain this in greater detail and also illustrate my points by means of sample images with the Hasselblad X1D Mark II and the Leica SL2. Looking at the two sensors from the two cameras on the left hand side, the SL2 with the classic film roll type format in terms of sensor dimensions, 36 times 24 millimeters dimension in width and height and a three to two aspect ratio. On the right hand side, the X1D Mark II from Hasselblad, 43.8 times 32.9 millimeters. So significantly larger in terms of dimension and the classical medium format four to three aspect ratio. A main parameter when comparing sensors is the so-called crop factor and the crop factor is the ratio or relation between the sensor diagonals of two different sensors and level metered at the diagonal of a full frame sensor. The Leica SL2 has a full frame sensor, so let's just go into the calculation. And if you want to calculate the diagonal of a sensor, you need to apply the theorem of Pythagoras. And it means you square the width, you square the height, you add them up, you take the square root. And then for a full frame sensor, as you can see here in the calculation, you end up at 43.27 millimeters as the length of the sensor diagonal. Applying the same calculation to the medium format sensor of the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, we end up at a length of the sensor diagonal at 54.78 millimeters. With these numbers, the calculation of the crop factor is straightforward. We put in the numerator the diagonal of the full frame sensor and the denominator the diagonal of the sensor we want to compare full frame with. And if we do this here and calculate the ratio, we end up at a crop factor of 0.79. As said, there will be a detailed video about the topic and the matter here, but in a nutshell, what's going on is the following. If you look at the focal length of a medium format lens for the Hasselblad, you have to multiply it by the crop factor to get the full frame equivalent focal length. The same applies to the aperture. And on the ISO, it's a bit more complicated because you're looking at light falling on an area, you actually need to apply the crop factor squared. And uh, if we apply this to the XCD 45P Hasselblad lens, a 45 millimeter on the XCD 45P corresponds to 35 millimeter on full frame for the Leica SL2. And if you would choose an aperture of F10, 
on the XCD45P, you would actually have the full frame equivalent f-stop of f8 at the Leica SL2. And on ISO, if you would shoot with that Hasselblad combo with an ISO 640, the matching full frame ISO on the Leica SL2 with the 35mm Sigma would actually be an ISO of 400. I'm fully aware that everything I'm saying here sounds complicated, difficult and a little bit nerdy or techy, but uh, check out that video which will come in the next weeks and uh, you will understand and most importantly see by means of sample images how you can actually convert the light triangle on a medium format sensor to a light triangle on a full frame sensor. Now here's the dilemma we are in when we do this comparison and I will explain in a moment how I actually approach the problem. We want to keep the ISO on both cameras the same, so we do not want to convert or transform the light triangle on the Hasselblad sensor into the equivalent parameters on the Leica SL2. And why do we not want to do that? Because the higher the ISO, the more electronically amplified will the sensitivity of the sensor be above its natural base ISO. And that means it includes, of course, the risk or the potential for more noise for erroneous pixels and for artifacts we don't want to have in the image. That's why I decided to match the ISO and always go in the comparison of two images for the same ISO on both camera sensors. The same rationale applies to exposure time and uh, what I decided for, I will match the exposure times on the two images to be compared coming from the two different cameras and make sure they are about the same, they are not exactly the same. A little bit give and take here because the grid for exposure times on the two cameras is different and uh, it's not always possible to match them if you go for long exposures. And why do we want to do that? Why do we want to keep the exposure time comparable? Because longer exposure times means the sensor gets hotter over time and that increases the potential again for around us pixels and noise of course. So if I want to keep the ISO on both cameras the same because I want to have the same level of or potential for noise and erroneous pixels on both cameras and not one camera shooting with a significantly higher ISO. And if in addition I want to keep the exposure times give or take comparable, the only parameter to tweak in the light triangle is the aperture of course. Changing the aperture in both setups meant that I went for an f8 on the Leica SL2 because that's a typical landscape aperture on a full frame sensor if you want to have reasonable depth of field. And on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, I opened the aperture a bit more to f6.3 to catch more light, but still keep a wide depth of field for the landscape photos I was going to shoot. I'm sure there will be some people who watch this video who will criticize the setup I have chosen here, but I can tell you right now up front, the results from this little experiment are so unique and unambiguous that there is nothing to criticize because we'll clearly show the different sensor properties in these two cameras. Here in front of you, you see the first pair of samples. On the left hand side, you see the Leica SL2 image, 60 second exposure shot, as I said, at an aperture of f8, base ISO of 100. And on the right hand side, you see the X1D Mark II image, 64 seconds exposure, so comparable exposure time, Aperture as said, f6.3 and also the base ISO of 100 on the X1D Mark II. For this particular pair of samples, I also did some post-processing. I'm going to show what I did in a moment, but I started with the Leica SL2 on the left-hand side, did post-processing in Lightroom, carried over the parameters to the Hasselblad X1D Mark II image by copy-paste and the only slider where I had to, let's say, be a little bit more flexible is on the exposure slider because as I said, we did not here have a full compatible setup on the light triangle. As a reference, here are the first part of my settings in Lightroom and you see all the settings on the two images are exactly the same except for the exposure slider where I went up by two stops and the SL2 and only 1.4 stops on the X1D Mark II in order to really make these images looking almost exactly the same. In terms of local settings, you see here that I took down highlights dramatically and boosted up shadows in the same way, but again, I did it in exactly the same way on both cameras by copy pasting the development settings. Last but not least on details, I kept all the default settings which Lightroom fills in for you and you see they are light gray here. The only slider I moved was the luminance slider again in the same way on both images up to 30. Turning to the first pair of images I already showed, let's now do various crops. Let's look into the image and let's see what we find. Coming to the first crop in the image, the images on both sides look quite comparable. In terms of colors, clarity and everything, these are deep crops here. 
And uh, the only thing I noticed when I looked into this particular zoom into the image that the left hand side on the Leica SL2 sensor has a tiny little bit of grain which you do not have on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II sensor. Interestingly, already at base ISO of 100 on both cameras, you see tiny little differences here. And uh, I'm not sure if people can see it on YouTube, but on my computer, I would say the right hand side from the X1D Mark II sensor is a little bit superior to what you have on the left hand side in terms of structure, clarity, and also this fine grain you find on the left hand side on the Leica SL2 image. Looking at the wooden barn hidden deeply in the image, the differences become more noticeable. And here I would say the structure of the roof, the way the colors appear and overall the image impression is clearly better on the right hand side on the X1D Mark II sensor than we find it on the Leica SL2 sensor. But note these are deep crops of course. And then going a bit crazy and cropping even deeper into that image with that wooden barn, you see on that sign stick to the wall of that barn that the right hand side clearly is much better, which is the X1D Mark II sensor. The story continues if we crop into other parts of these images and compare the SL2 and the X1D Mark II images side by side. And it confirms the observations I just mentioned and pointed out on the first few examples before. The X1D Mark II sensor seems to be a little bit superior to the Leica SL2 sensor even at base ISO. But the story clearly doesn't end here. So let's now look into a heavily underexposed situation here. On the left hand side the Leica SL2 with 15 second exposure again at f8 and base ISO 100. On the right hand side the X1D Mark II with 16 seconds so 15 versus 16 seconds again at f6.3 on the medium format sensor and ISO 100. And now let's boost up the exposure and let's see what we get here. And at first sight, both images look good and usable, although we had to boost them up by two to three stops on the exposure slider. But as always, if you go into detail, differences will reveal themselves. Revisiting that wooden barn here clearly shows that on the Leica SL2 side, boosting up in post-processing by two to three stops comes with a lot of noise and grain, whereas the X1D Mark II image is still super clear and super clean. And of course, this is all occurring here at the base ISO of both cameras at an ISO of 100. Looking into other sections of the image confirms the observations. On the full frame sensor, left hand side, much more noise and grain on the right hand side, medium format sensor, a much cleaner, much clearer picture. And uh, I think I've shown this several times when I looked into dynamic range of cameras. If the scene in front of the camera is really, really dark and you have to pull it up by the exposure slider by more than two stops, which was the case here, then you get this at the expense of a lot of noise and grain. On a full frame sensor, on the medium format sensor, it still looks pretty, pretty good. Revisiting some part of the scene, which we looked into before, just confirms everything I said. Let's switch to another setup and let's see what we get there. Clearly what I'm interested in was also high ISO behavior. And here I overexposed the scene massively, I should say, with a five second exposure on both images, aperture setting the same as before, f8 on the SL2, f6.3 on the X1D Mark II, but now at an ISO of 12,800, so pretty high. Both images look very good for an ISO of 12,800. And I mentioned this several times on most of the Leica cameras I know or own, you can go up pretty high in ISO, no problem at all. But if you put next to it or aside a medium format sensor like the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, you actually will be surprised how much better the medium sensor is performing. And you see it here in this image where on the left hand side on the Leica SL2, besides the fact that it handles the high ISO very, very well, Nevertheless, the X1D Mark II appearance has less grain and less noise. Here another crop scene where I actually was surprised how well the Leica SL2 did compete with the Hasselblad X1D Mark II. And uh, clearly you have that little extra of noise and grain on the left hand side on the SL2 image, but it's nevertheless a fantastic result. Since I shoot with both, a lot with Leica cameras, but also medium format, I know the quality of medium format sensors very well. And I think this is a good result the Leica SL2 is achieving here. Nevertheless, the X1D Mark II again is superior. This is the last crop I wanted to show in this particular setup. And then we move on to the last setup I wanted to discuss.
And uh, as I pointed out before in written form on what was on display, also pay attention here to the colors. And look at the green color on the right hand side on the X1 DMR2 sensor on that tree compared to the left hand side on the SL2 and also the coloring of the trailer standing in the middle of the snow. And I should say here on these images there was no post processing going on at all which could explain the differences we see here in the coloring between the SL2 and the X1 DMR2. In the last pair of samples I was pushing the envelope even further and was combining the two big challenges for the SL2 namely heavily underexposing and at the same time also going for a high ISO again of 12,800. The ISO between the two camera sensors was matching again. Both had the ISO of 12,800. The aperture setting the same as before, f8 on the SL2, f6.3 on the X1D Mark II, but heavily underexposing now with an exposure time of 1 over 10 seconds. I applied no post-processing but pushed up the exposure slider on the SL2 by four stops on the X1D Mark II, somewhere between three and four stops, and this is what I found here. The SL2, besides the fact being an excellent camera and having a high dynamic range, as I pointed out many times on my channel, this was too much for the SL2, it's completely overwhelmed, whereas the X1D Mark II with its substantially larger sensor is actually dealing still quite well with the challenge here. Here I pulled up the exposure slider on the SL2 image to five stops up and the exposure slider on the X1D Mark II image to be four stops up and still the X1D Mark II can handle the challenge. Since the SL2 was overwhelmed by that challenge with its full frame sensor, I focused on the medium format sensor only and pulled up the exposure slider for the X1D Mark II image by one more stop which is then five stops up and constitutes the maximum you can do in Lightroom. And still the image is of course not a masterpiece but seems usable. As a next step I applied some post processing including some noise reduction via the luminance slider and wanted to see if I can create a halfway usable image here. And I think as a result the image is not great of course. It has all the flaws and uh, weaknesses coming from the setup I had chosen before but even if you crop in, you see that if this is the only choice you have, it's providing a usable image which you can show around and can give people an impression what scene you had in front of you under very difficult shooting conditions. But the most remarkable strength of that Hasselblad medium format sensor is the color representation. If you look at the colors coming from that totally underexposed image at the lights of the cities at the shore of Lake Zurich, this is just remarkable. Comparing in Lightroom before and after on the X1D Mark II image reveals the super strong dynamic range we have on these type of medium format sensors. And despite the fact that the Leica SL2 is one of the best cameras I know, but in a full frame camp, a medium format sensor will be superior. Let's now put our findings a little bit in perspective. First of all, the SL2 is the more universal camera. Its autofocus is much quicker. It has better video capabilities, 4K, cinematic 4K, and it is just a very professional tool for professional photographers. And by the way, it's one of my most favorite cameras as people can easily guess if they look what I post on my channel. But if it comes to a comparison of sensor only, the medium format sensor in the Hasselblad X1D Mark II clearly is superior. You can argue about my method and whether you would have chosen a different setup to make this comparison. But at the very end, the outcome is pretty clear. When it comes to dynamic range and to noise and grain, or I should say the avoidance of noise and grain, the medium format sensor just is much better than the full frame sensor, period. And clearly there's a reason why DxO Mark, which is my personal reference for sensor and lens testing, has chosen to say that the X1D sensor, which is the same in the X1D Mark II and the 907X from Hasselblad is currently the best ever tested sensor in their universe. I hope with this video I answered the various questions I got from my last two postings and if you liked that video I would be happy if you dropped me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, stay tuned on my channel, there is always more to come. Stay safe and healthy and peace out.